Hello everyone, this is my 3D printed 10 inch server rack and we are going to talk about it in this video. To print this rack I used Bamboo Lab P1S 3D printers. For my choice of filament I have picked two spools of ABS. One of them is fluorescent sparkle blue by Sparta and another one is sparkle black by KVP. As we're printing big flat surfaces in some cases it was hard to avoid warping, but increasing the bed temperature to 100 degrees Celsius and lowering the part cooling fan to 30% helped to reduce warping significantly. My ASUS router outgrew my networking requirements, so I purchased a bunch of Ubiquiti products. I had been using Ubiquiti equipment at my workspace before, and it held up pretty well. Shipping took some time. Meanwhile, I was preparing models and planning the future layout for the rack. I settled on rack design by Malker, as he also had a lot of mounting plates already designed, though I still had to solve a couple of problems to fit my equipment. More about those later. To assemble the rack, you will only need 16 M5 bolts with narrow heads and 16 heat set inserts. However, to mount actual equipment, be ready to order a lot of M5 bolts with wider heads and plenty M5 nuts. You can see right here how many M5 bolts with wider heads you will need. Expect to have same amount on the back side as well. The closer I got to the final build, the more apparent it became that wire management is going to be a huge problem. At this point, I have designed two mount plates. One is for actual wire management with Velcros. I have two of them installed, one right here and one right here. Another one I have made to mount my cheap Insignia power strip within the rack itself. I also replaced original Ubiquiti USB-C adapter with Apple laptop charger. And now we have only one wire, one cable going directly to the EPS. It's much, much cleaner setup. For uninterruptible power supply, I'm using APC Black UPS 600. This is actually a pretty good model. I have two of those at my home. Both of them work flawlessly over the years. I had no issues with them. And it's plugged in via Sonoff S31 smart plug. I flashed it with Tasmota firmware and connected to my home assistant so I can track the power consumption of the rack. And during last few days, it was around 50 watts of total power for all network equipment I have installed right now. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find solid design to mount my access point within the rack. So I have made dual purpose mount. You either can mount it inside of the rack or put it on the plate to keep it on the table. In order to use my design, you will need M3 bolts and heat inserts, and you can output Ethernet cable in case you want to connect it to the patch panel. Some time ago, I purchased myself a Linkstar H68K, and since then, it has been sitting on my desk without any use. So I made extra mount right here, so we could be mounted within the rack, and actually using it right now. So let's talk about final build. At the heart of my network, I have Ubiquiti Cloud Gateway Max, with ability to install SSD storage, in case if I want to add cameras into the future. This router has been working pretty well so far. Next, I got Ubiquiti 16-port PoE switch, which unfortunately only has 8 ports for PoE, and I already have reached the power limit. The main reason why I decided to go with PoE switch is that I wanted to prevent all the equipment restarting in case of power drops. The PoE switch also helps to reduce number of wires used within my network. I'm currently running Raspberry Pis, Wi-Fi access points and room switches via PoE and it helps to reduce overall clutter like significantly. I highly recommend it. Just make sure you get at least PoE Plus switch to avoid undervolt your devices. I have made that mistake before, I just bought a regular PoE switch and it wasn't suitable for that purpose. Initially, I picked a 6U rack design as overkill, expecting to have a lot of extra space, but longer I worked on this build, faster I run out of the space. Funny is that I reviewed a lot of 10-inch builds on Reddit and noticed that I'm not the only person struggling with that. People actually building smaller racks and then put stuff on top of those racks, which doesn't look right. So I recommend building a bigger rack than you think you need. I personally was very happy to find a home for a lot of devices that before were scattered around my house. For instance, like this Linkstar. 
I really hope this video was somewhat educational. Leave your likes, subscribe, and if you have questions, ask them into the comment section. See you at the next one. Bye-bye.